There's no time. Ta-da! Here we are. It's the 150th episode. Yeah. We're going to do something different. We're going we're gonna to do something different this well, time. A little time. bit. Kind of different. <laughs> we're going to have a variety of different topics, and we're just going to let it roll. This might be a three or four hour show. I don't know. Depends on how we feel. We're not really sure. You know, I'm going to have three different kinds of tequila. <laughs> All right. He's planned ahead for this. Yeah. Three different types of tequila. We'll, we'll see how it goes. It'll be all right. We'll see. Here's we got the thing. Good, we got some good topics. Planned. When I was first conceiving the idea, and this was like months ago, because I am nothing if not like I try to get on top of shit, even though I try to get on top of shit. But then by the time it actually rolls around, I'm like, oh, I'm not on top of shit. So, you know. Right. But what I was initially planning on doing for this show, like a very long time ago, was I thought we were going to do one on location. And specifically, I wanted to do one at St. Augustine because there's like a lot of like ghost stories and shit there. I was like, oh, that would be neat if we could like go there and just walk around St. Augustine. And I could talk about all the different ghost stories. Actually, I'm kind of glad we didn't do it because, you know. Might be out down there for a couple of days. To yeah, get and done. I'd be like, you know, broke as shit. Yeah. So, you know. So that didn't work out. And then for a little while, we talked about doing, like, maybe a live stream. And a couple of people have Plus recommended that. as hot that. as it is. You imagine being down there yeah, that, how hot it, as it is right that's now. That's true. It's seriously. It's super hot. It, if you don't live in Florida, like, this is not. Like, it. even, like, when it's in 90s or 100s or something like that, people are like, yeah, yeah it's hot, but whatever. But the other day, they have a heat advisory. Yeah. As in. Please do not go outside or yeah. you will die of so heat stroke. 105 degrees. Uh, well, it was 104. The heat index was 114. 104 because of all... 100, it was 114. 114, yeah. Yesterday or the day before. Yeah, because of the humidity. It's like Dagobah. Yeah, it's like, and it's not like desert. It's like you go outside and it's like, yeah. you know how when you like walk into um, a sauna, yeah. like at the gym? It's like that, but yeah. everywhere and you can't Baby cookie. It. Baby cookie was out in the... In the um, living room trying to get my attention look 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 now look the damn snake in the house yeah we had a snake yeah. in the house about a foot long pookie's good though she always like yeah, tries it's, it's just like whenever a cockroach gets in yeah. she's always like get it, mommy get it, get daddy it. look yeah. look yeah, yeah, and she'll yeah. come and sit by it and be like oh do, yep. or, do you see do you see? all the outside swamp creatures <laughs> all the outside swamp creatures try to come in get away yeah. from the heat yeah, even they're trying to get in that. Yeah. It's like, please save us. Yeah. Air conditioning. And I felt really bad because I like snakes. I know a lot of people are scared yeah. of them, but I actually kind of like them. And this was just a baby. Yeah. Um, I don't know what kind of it came was. came underneath the door. Yeah, I don't know what kind it was because I didn't see it. But I kind of, it's like I almost feel bad like putting them back. It's like, I wish you could stay in here and hang out, man. I know it sucks. That could there. kill that snake. <laughs> she would, yeah. That's I was kind of trying to grab it. She, she, she started swatting at it. <laughs> when I grabbed it, she started to grab it. She's like, oh, it's like so a string, it. but a lot. Don't kill it. <laughs> yeah, she's into that kind here of thing. Here she comes. She's getting up a bottle of drink. Yeah, uh oh. So that means the camera might start to yeah. open in a second. <laughs> we'll see. Yep, there yeah. it goes. <laughs> she's goes. Moving the camera. <laughs> there goes her little butt. She but yeah, so. No. So in the end, like we might eventually do a live stream and stuff, even though we didn't get our shit together this time. And like I said, and in case you couldn't tell, like I still have this illness, whatever the hell this is, which I'm kind of hoping hasn't progressed into pneumonia, because um, it's just hung around for so long. It's dangerous to have me on a live stream. <clears throat> That's especially yeah, especially when I'm drinking. I don't know though, because like I said, <laughs> I, and and I was telling you before, he's like, I don't know if that would be such a good idea, like especially when I'm drunk and stuff, because I yeah. might say something, you know, really I'll, like, I'll say dumb some or offensive whatever. shit. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, although I'm sitting there thinking, well, we do the show live, like yeah. we don't really plan anything. Not like much a, gets cut out, and not much gets cut out. Um, Mostly hemming and hawing and dropping things or something. Yeah, like if something like that yeah. happens, or if like some, you know, if some noise happens mm. in the outside, or like the, you know, the kitty knocks over the camera or something like that. Yeah, I'll take that out. But other than that, I don't take much out. So right. I said, you know, I wouldn't really worry that much about it. But so we will probably do one of those in the future. But what we decided to do is this was actually kind of Tom's idea. I, I was like, well, let's just do maybe an extra long episode. And he's like, let's just do space, like, stuff. space conspiracies or yeah. like fun stuff about space. So I was sitting there because uh, I've been wanting to do a show about um, like the Apollo moon landing hoax. Um, I want to do one about flat earthers. 
And um, I also wanted to do, because I've been, I wrote an article recently about the whole Black Knight satellite type of thing. So I said, well, let's just, I said, those will be the three main things. But I said, if you want to go off on some other kind of shit, then you can do that too. I kind of stuff's come out about Tic Tac UFO. Yeah, so you can talk about yeah. that as well. Um, I just wanted to make something like, not so much like, yeah, I want to have like a topic on here or like a series of topics, but I kind of wanted this to be more like a fan yeah, you know something more geared toward fans that just like listening to us yap and go. We got the shirts. Tangents. Got all the shirts that we need to do the shirts for our for our subscribers. Um, uh, on Patreon, man, I had to do a whole bunch of different silk sc- uh, different photo screens. Man, it's kind of, some of them I really screwed them up, but I, I got two of them that I think will work. It's the same photo. Yeah, it's just me and Jenny on it. it says thirteen o'clock. So I'll print up another. Uh, I'll print up another prototype and see how it comes out. If not, if I don't like how it comes out, I'm trying to get it perfect, people. Yeah. Yeah. There was a. We had a couple that I probably could have used, but they just. I'm looking for perfection. Yeah. You know, I want something that I would wear. You know, so I think I have two. They're the same image, but I think out of these two, yeah. one of them might be good enough. We just have to make. Um... You know, just test just shirts have to, of them. Yeah, and to see test which it, one and then I print up the shirts. Better. It doesn't take long. Yeah, so just, we'll see which one comes right, out. Right, and if, if if this screen isn't any good, it's back to the drawing board. I gotta go down there and get more emulsion. Yeah, clear the screens. That it would be and, so difficult to get yeah, a good screen. The, the problem is the development time. Yeah, the development we can't time's like been figure kind of out the exact. Because, like, all the videos we saw, like, everyone uses different emulsion. Like, the emulsions yeah. are different colors. They're using different uh, times in which... Yeah, they, they have uh, different setups. It's like yeah. some of them just put stuff out in the sun. Some of it put it in a closet with a light bulb. And it's like, right. you with know... With and without reflectors. Yeah, with and without reflectors. So, so it's tried like, it a bunch of different times and it's... Have and it's satisfied. really... It's kind of sensitive. Yeah, it's very sensitive, right. So you have to kind of get it almost exactly. Especially if you're dealing with, like, a photographic image with, like, fading and stuff yeah. like that. You really want it... Faces. Good. We're yeah. having the problem with the faces. Yeah, the lettering comes out fine. Right. It's just so it's the faces. Too that much are... underexposure. Yeah. The problem isn't overexposure. It's been underexposing, and I've been keeping it in there over the over the prescribed time. Yeah. It's still under underexposed. Yeah. Even though I'm using the light bulb and the dark room, and you know that that it recommends, it's just. Well, one time it was a little too. Th- the emulsion was too thick on one side, and that screwed some shit up. It fell apart. It, it's. It's technical. Well, and then sometimes too, if you're trying to like when you're trying to wash out the emulsion out of the it's, screen, like sometimes screen. if you if you wash it too much, like it'll, it'll start it'll peeling off like it, yeah. parts of it that you don't want it peeled right. off, and so you really have to like be careful. So, it's just my first attempt at using photo screen, and it, it, it it's, yeah you gotta uh, get good with it. Yeah, it takes time. All the screen printing you did before was regular, the more traditional method where you would screen. cut out like yeah right. stuff like that. So this is our first time using photo emulsion, so we're just we're just trying to get it right, mm-hmm. but you know. <laughs> It'll be You'll get your shirt soon. Yeah, it's just don't worry about it. Yeah. So, um, other than that, I think the only other shout out that I had before we kind of maybe start talking about whatever was I wanted to thank one of our patrons who was a patron before, uh, and his name is Liam, and he actually increased his support in this past week. So, thank you very much for that. That was super awesome. Yeah, thanks. Um, is he you know, be getting a shirt. <clears throat> mm, the, the, no, the but he'll be in. Okay. No, but he'll be in the next drawing. Okay. Okay. He'll be in the next drawing, which will be June, July, uh, September, October. I can't remember. But yeah, so okay. September, October, we're, we're going to be doing another drawing for... It'll probably be more shirts because we'll have all the uh, screen printing stuff, yeah. you know, perfected by then. So we're going to do like a different design like every quarter. So that's probably how we're going to do with that. Yeah. All right. So let's get into talking about the Apollo moon landing hoax. Yeah. A lot of people think that that didn't happen. One, well, I don't know if it's a lot of people. Some people. But some people. I've met guys that said, oh, you didn't go to the moon. I said, what do you mean you didn't go to the moon? I can't carry all the fuel. And I just said, man, I'm <laughs> Never mind. Well, you know, it's it's like one of those things that this is one of those, this is one of, like one of the granddaddies of all like American yeah. conspiracy theories, right? And it's one that to me is just like the edifice of stupid is just like so massive that it's like you're not even really sure where to begin scaling it you know what i mean this is like the kilimanjaro or the mount everest of stupid well i don't know if i'd go that far maybe flat earth is is that but you know it's this is the kind of conspiracy theory where so much evidence has to be denied or 
you know, sort of swept under the rug that yeah. it's like, why even bother going to that length to, you well, know what I mean? It was, there was a space race going on between. Well, the, I know that. The, well, I'm telling the audience. Yeah. All right. There was a space race going on between the United States and the Soviet Union. And there are some people that believed that instead of actually going to the moon, we were having trouble. So we just faked the moon landing. In a in a, uh, in, in, in a what do you call it? Not a theater, a uh, a studio. Yeah. That they had a special studio built to fake that landing, you know. So we could Thereby, rub it in the ruskies' yeah. faces. And that they did launch a rocket, but they just did a couple orbits around the Earth. They orbited for a while, and then yeah. they came back down to make it look like they actually went to the moon. All right. Uh, all right. It's so a lot of problems with this, you know. Well, uh, lo- lot yeah, of problems that's with this, putting it mildly. This idea, you know. What was his name? Buzz Aldrin punched a motherfucker out over he this. He did, yeah. Okay. And there, it, there was a video of it on YouTube. I don't know if it's there anymore because the yeah. one link that I saw had broken, so maybe somebody took it down. My yeah. mother's dad worked for uh, Grumman Aerospace. And, yeah. And he worked on this project. Yeah, they were one of the contractors. Yeah, he was one of the contractors. And uh, he drove one of the... They made several of those lunar rovers, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? He drove it on a mock-up lunar surface. and But what my what my um, grandfather did was that he made the uh, explosive bolt wiring systems. He designed all that explosive bolts in, that, in the stage separations. He was actually one of the chief guys in it. He also um, engineered the fuel injection system for the engine in the F-14 Tomcat. And he got sent to Iran back when we were on good terms with Iran with the Shah and he helped the Shah set up his air force so I, I haven't mentioned it on the show so far but my mother's side of the family all kind of grew up in Iran even though they were they were Americans and uh, I got all kinds of stories about Iran they were lived in Isfahan and uh, all my aunts speak Farsi and shit <laughs> uh, yeah but that and then they were there for the revolution when the Ayatollah Khomeini came my Aunt Ruthie was the last Western woman to leave off the roof of that embassy yeah. before they all got, you know, overrun by the, uh, the revolutionaries, you know. She was, you know, the rest of them all got captured. They were held as hostages in there until, uh, for Jimmy Carter's time. But, uh, yeah, a lot of problems, a lot of problems with saying that the moon landing didn't happen. But let's go ahead and hear the theories. What is? Why do they say that it didn't happen? Yeah, the thing is, well, there's a couple different variations of this. Like you implied earlier, there are some people that are like, we never even went into space at all. Some people said, yeah, we went into space, um, but they only went into orbit. They didn't actually walk on the moon. So that part was faked. You know what I mean? Like they launched a rocket with no people in it, but yeah. then like scooted the astronauts over to Nevada or Area 51 or wherever the fuck the studio was and filmed that going on over there. You know, so there, so there's a couple different variations of this. And like I said, there's a little bit of overlap with Flat Earth Society too because like Flat Earthers, some of them believe that you can't even go to space at all. Um, so there's a little bit of overlap here too. Now, really, I don't know... I don't know if anyone doubted the moon landing until about 1976 and kind of the granddaddy of the uh, Apollo moon landing hoax conspiracy was this guy named Bill Casing and he wrote a book called We Never Went to the Moon, America's $30 billion swindle. Uh, It was self-published as a lot of stuff back then was. He wrote a bunch of other books too, but I think this was kind of the one that had the most uh, cultural impact, I guess. But so from that, I think a lot of the conspiracy theory happened. So the interesting thing about it is that, I mean, when people talk about the moon landing, they're talking about the first one, 1969, Apollo 11. Um, But we've been to the moon. There were other Apollo missions after that. Apollo kept going on. Yeah. And they did the same thing each time. There were, what, six of them, right? I think there were, yes, at least six. There was a couple. Well, Apollo 13, um, you know, there was an explosion and they messed up, you know, just like the Tom Hanks movie. um, And they had to bring them back. The the astronauts were okay, but they didn't get to the moon. But some of the other ones they did, um, and they did the same exact thing. They put two little astronauts on the moon and they walked around. And then one was in orbit waiting for them. And then they came back. So that happened six times. It's not just one time. So I think 
there's like a weird misconception there. Yeah, it was not a one-time event. <clears throat> yeah, it wasn't a one-time event. It yeah. happened several times. It, yeah, there was that was between 1969 and 1972. Yeah, um, with Apollo 11 being the best known, and we just watched in the theater we, that documentary Apollo 11 because it yeah. was like the 50th anniversary. Uh, you guys, I Ten mean, stars. Yeah, it's like if you didn't, it's a shame if you didn't see it in like IMAX. We saw it in IMAX, right? Yeah, or Dolby I mean, or whatever. Sound. Holy crap, that was amazing. And like the footage of it and stuff like that, it just made you feel like you yeah. were there. Yeah. And I think seeing that, I mean, not only gave me a greater appreciation, because, you know, the, the moon landing was three years before I was born. So I've only seen it. I didn't see it happen firsthand. You know, I only saw it later on when I was growing up. I did. But, yeah, but seeing I was a baby. that. I was a baby in a little. Yeah, the baby's bundle. like, look. My on the mother moon. showed me the television. <laughs> I was born July 1st, and I think they would. I think I was a couple weeks old when it, when it happened. Yes, and yeah. you remember it, I'm sure. I don't remember. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. yeah, babies can't remember anything until they're about three years old. But, um, yeah, so, but seeing that really gave me a new appreciation. And that was kind of one of the reasons that I wanted to do something about the moon, the moon landing hoax. It's just because seeing that also made me a lot madder about the moon landing hoax people. Because I'm like, look at all the people's memories that you were yeah. shitting on. Yeah. And all of the people that you were calling liars or shills. Yeah. I mean, because it wasn't just the astronauts. It wasn't just NASA. It wasn't. Just, it was the contractors. It was, like, other it was people. like four hundred thousand yeah. people worked on this project yeah. in various capacities. The, and for all of those people to be lying for some reason, I'm like, that just seems. The problem crazy. with the hoax theory is the actual Saturn V rocket itself. Many of the many of them were made. And many of the boosters still still survive today, the big fat Saturn V booster yeah. rockets. You can go through those plans, and you can execute those plans today. And what you'll end up with is a rocket that can get to the moon. It did go to the moon. Once you have those plans, and if you have that amount of money, it's easier to just go ahead and go to the moon than it is to fake it. It's not yeah. really that hard to go to the moon. You can go with 60s technology. Well, and they um, did. Yeah. The, the the really sad thing about the whole Saturn project is what happened with the Saturn rocket. Um, they killed the Saturn rocket, and instead they made the damn space shuttle. Yeah. But had they just kept making those Saturn V boosters, those Saturn rockets, they were cheaper to make. They had a lot of them on order, and you'd have a lot more stuff up in orbit by the, by now. That that space shuttle didn't make sense. Every time that rocket launched, it had to launch the shuttle and the payload. That's a lot of weight. Yeah. You could just get rid of the shuttle itself and just launch the payload. You know? Yeah. And that's that's what that Saturn V heavy lift was all about. Had they kept going with that Saturn V heavy lift design? Because it was designed to put a bunch of, bunch of stuff up in space. Had they just kept with that, then what you saw in 2001, a space odyssey, would have been real. Because yeah. that's what they were planning on doing. You know, including nuclear-powered uh, spacecraft and everything. But... Killing that Saturn V rocket was a big mistake, and yeah. building that space shuttle was a big, was even bigger mistake. They should have just kept that Saturn rocket. You'd have a lot of stuff up there by now. Yeah, probably. And it was a lot cheaper. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but like I said, and this, this is kind of, and I probably mentioned this before, but this is kind of my beef with a lot of conspiracy theories: is that for it to be true, you would have to posit in this case. That almost half a million people were in on the deception, and yeah. somehow nobody said anything about well, it, figured it out. or nobody figured it out, or anything like that. That's that's why, like, I I feel like there's an inverse proportional. It's like the bigger a purported conspiracy theory gets, the less likely it is to be true, if because you, there's you just can't get that many people to be quiet. I'm sure there's it. a good enough telescope to where you can just look at the surface of the moon and just see that lander sitting there. Well, that's the thing. It's yeah. like they've done All like flybys of the moon, like India did yeah. one, like some other countries have done them, where you can see like the tracks of the rovers. You can yeah. see shit on yeah. there. You know what I mean? Like you can see where the landing site yeah. was. You know, so you can see it there. Yeah. There's also a kind of thing, and I saw this one guy talking. He was like, you know, on I don't think it was the first mission, but on one of the subsequent missions, they left like those laser reflector things like yeah. on the moon. So, so it so you, you can bounce a laser off of that, right, and get an exact reading of how and far get away an exact is. reading of how far away yeah. away it is because they put them there for that reason. Right. But I mean, there's all so I kind of wanted to go into um, 
there's a lot of good sites about this, but I found this really good one on um, Phil Plate, who is uh, an astronomer. And I've read a lot of his books, like, uh, I think he wrote Death from the Skies, like, about, you know, comets and stuff like that. Um, and he has a really good breakdown of this one particular program, which I think um, it aired on Fox in 2001. And it was called uh, Conspiracy Theory, Did We Land on the Moon? And he kind of did, like, a point-by-point -point takedown. He said he took, like, four pages of notes while he was watching this stupid thing, and he couldn't, like, believe how deceptive it was and like how stupid it was like and how it didn't really go with it like it didn't really have any skeptical you know what i mean it's like all it had was deniers on there they just had a couple people trying to explain yeah. things and then like try to edit them to make them look dumb and for, stuff like that for so. me the dead giveaway that we did go to the moon all right was <clears throat> the, they had these claims well when you're seeing them walking on the surface it's just a studio and they've kind of slowed it down a little bit yeah i've heard that all one right. too well, they showed somebody reenact that, okay, where they put on a space suit, they went on a fake lunar surface, ran around, maybe they had some wires or cables on them, and then they sh played it in slow motion. It looks nothing like no, that. No, it doesn't look and anything the like that. And the dead giveaway is the sand, the moon yeah. sand. Yep. When those guys are stepping or kind of running in the moon sand... You can see some of the sand go up. It's a parabolic like arc. A, like an arc. It doesn't and, poof out. Like yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't poof out. Because there's no air. And, it, and no it's air. moving too slowly. You yeah. Know? It's falling in slow motion because it's in, it's in low G. Yeah. And you just can't fake that, especially back in those days. You could fake it with CG today. Yeah, but, but back you then you, you sure could. You couldn't fake it. In the 1960s. Yeah. That's just stupid to even like posit yeah. that. And like I said, I think a lot of the... I think a lot of the problem too is that people, since you, since we here on Earth, you don't experience a vacuum in your everyday life, so you're not used to seeing how things react. Yeah. So if it looks funny to you, in some ways, that's almost like proof of a conspiracy that it's fake. Yeah. Even though you think that that would be proof that it was real, because it's like, well, obviously, shit doesn't behave like that on Earth. Like I said, oh, cats run across the <laughs> keyboard. Get off, Pookie. Get it out of there. <laughs> She's like, what? I was. Yeah. What are you doing? You're causing yeah. trouble. <laughs> she okay. like ran across. The yeah, you just. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully, it didn't turn the shit off. Yeah, we're good. You do good. <laughs> yeah, they're just kind of. They come up with these weird theories about you know explanations. Well, the reflections in the in the uh, in the astronauts' face plates. Yeah. Like it, you know the shadows aren't right. All this kind of stuff. No. I, I, seen all that debunked yeah and it's like correct. i said yeah it's and correct. like i said i'll go into this and i was even watching i watched this really long thing the other day about this um they do it's a company they do like 3d modeling and stuff they do it for movies and whatnot and they're trying to um like show how because that was one of the most common things that they were trying to debunk was that oh a lot of these pictures that you see they're supposedly taken on the moon like the shadows of the things are like not parallel as you'd think that they would be um or that because the only light source is supposed to be the sun at least according to them but then when this company was trying to recreate the images they said well the thing is yeah the main light source is the sun but they had flash cubes. But they had, well, the, not only fa lights. flash cubes, but yeah. their spacesuits were bright white. Yeah. The moon dust is really reflective, so yeah. shit was reflecting off of the ground. There was, like, all these different reflective surfaces that were bouncing light all over the yeah. place. And honestly, the, the way the shadows fall, they're like, it does that on Earth, too. Um, there is more than one light source. Like I said, the sun is the main one, but there were some other, like, more minor ones. But if you had, like pulled up really far like off the moon and looked then they would have been parallel they only didn't look parallel because of the distortion of the photographs and stuff like that yeah so um but yeah so phil played on bad astronomy he did like this takedown of this particular um this particular quote unquote i'm not even calling it it's it's a mockumentary i guess it's like a documentary uh that was on uh, the Fox Channel in 2001. Now, they claimed that prior to this show that maybe, like, less than 10% of people in uh, the United States, or at least people that were polled, uh, believed that the Apollo moon landing was faked. But after this show, it was more like 15 to 20%. Now, I don't know if that's really true or not, or if they just pulled that out their ass. Um, most of the 
polls that I've seen, Gallup poll, uh, Time Magazine did a poll, shit like that, it's usually about 6%, which is still too high because 6% is still a lot of stupid people. But, you know, it's better than 20% for sure. Yeah. Well, it'll all be resolved soon again, I think, for the general public because we're going to be going back there eventually. Yeah, I People mean... People think that, you know, well, it's a waste of time on <coughs> the moon. No, it's a lot of good stuff on the moon. There's some kind of a... I think it's called helium-3 or something, or what was the name? There's some kind of a, an element you can get there. It's on, it's in the, it's in that surface sand, or that surface dust to the moon. The sun hitting it creates it. And you can harvest that stuff and make really powerful fuel out of it. Yeah. It's like supposed to be something really good. You can power, you know... You can make you can get fuel off yeah. of, off the surface of the moon, so uh, they'll probably use it as like a jumping point to colonize other moons. Well, I mean, I'm kind of the type of person that I mean, I feel like pretty much any knowledge is going to be useful. If it's not yeah. useful right now, it might be useful like down the line, or it might might be useful in some way you didn't even imagine. So that's kind of why. If you have a chance to, like, explore the moon again, if you have a chance to explore some other place, we want to just do it. Because it's like, you know, you never know how... Well, we have to colonize. That shit's going to, like, shake out later. You, the, something there might be really important later We on. have to colonize all that stuff, though. <coughs> because uh, you yeah. can't, mankind's going to survive. You, you can't be a one-planet species. you got to be a multi-planet species. Because planets don't last long. It's all finite. Yeah. You know. Uh, if something could happen. You could have a meteor impact here on earth and just blot out the sun for 10 years it could kill everything here you yeah know? If that happens you know mankind would be wiped out but if you had a moon base or a colony on mars you could come back later and repopulate yeah it's like we're just gonna pop up to the moon yeah. for a few years we'll be back when this is all sorted out but yeah so one well, of the i think they're gonna make a moon i think they're gonna make a mars city eventually yeah i mean you know they just send all the stuff there beforehand and then people come and assemble it you know we, we live right near uh, the SpaceX Center. I watch those little SpaceX rockets take off and land all the time. Yeah, we don't live that far from yeah. the Kennedy Space Center. So you can watch it live on Probably your only smart TV. You can see them. We go to the 30, movies. 40 we're miles seeing them. them. Yeah. And um, those new SpaceX rockets are reusable. And stuff like that, you know, with, with technology like that, you can start sending everything you need to Mars, you know, to build a colony. Yeah. Don't send people. Just send the stuff. Well, yeah, you just, yeah, don't send people don't until you people got everything all there. nice. Yeah. And send then nuclear reactors, that. everything. <laughs> yeah. I think it'd be kind of cool to go on, so, you know. Yeah. Well, if they I'm had everything... I'm old enough to where I could go on a one-way trip. I mean, if they had everything sorted out there, I'm not going to go, like, yeah. a, like in the Martian and be, like, have to do the thing and, like, grow potatoes and shit. I'm not I think what they that. would do is, like, for four or five years, they'd do nothing but just send everything, everything there. Yeah. And it would land. And then later on, they'd start sending people. It wouldn't be like you see on the movies, one or two people. <clears throat> They'd probably send like two or three hundred. Well, yeah, you'd have to. They'd all be getting there around the same time. Yeah. You know, you'd have, you'd have a whole breeding population. Yeah. Then they assemble all the stuff that's been dropped there, and you got a city. I, I think it's gonna be cool there, underground stuff. You know. Yeah. Be boring at first. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> and, you know. Until somebody opens some cool shit up there. Well, yep. you send three hundred people, all of them pretty as shit. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be wild up there. Man. You're gonna make a reality show out yeah. of it. <laughs> be wild. Everybody want to go. The real world. You gotta on be Mars. a ten. You gotta go to. Gotta be a ten to go to get to Mars. Combined with Gattaca. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, one of the funniest things. This cracked me up so much about this fucking documentary, you guys. Like one of the first claims that they made out of the gate. And I don't know what exactly they were trying to prove with this because this is a very easy thing to look up because we have a thing called Google now. Yeah. So the program says that, oh, there's this movie called Capricorn One. I remember that. Which was about how NASA faked a Mars I expedition. That, a little kid. Yeah. And they're saying, oh, the footage... Um, you know, that was taken from the moon, the Apollo moon mission, is really similar to the scenes in Capricorn One. Yeah, well, Capricorn One was made in 1978, which was almost 10 yeah. years after the Apollo mission. So, of course, the movie is going to make it look like the real thing because that's what they wanted it to look like. And they also had something to, to go by. Yeah. They knew what a space mission looked like. That's what I mean. So it's like, so Go anything... see a science fiction movie before the moon landing and look how yeah, they this show was. They know, know what that they know looked, what it looked like. like. Yeah. Well, they, yeah, it's like hardly anybody got it right. So the fact that, I mean, why would you even put that in your documentary? You're trying to show that the moon landing was a hoax and going, oh, this movie from like 10 years later 
was looks off like the, the footage yeah. that it, I'm like, well, duh. Yeah. It's like that was the whole that that was kind of the whole thing too. Why people are always saying like, oh, Stanley Kubrick like helped fake the moon landing and stuff like that because oh, 2001 looked so much looked like so real. Yeah. a real thing. I'm like, the reason it looked like a real thing was because he went to NASA yeah. and like had the engineers be consultants on the movie because he wanted it to look <laughs> as realistic as possible. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that, but if you look at all the bonus features on 2001. You'll see that that was actually the movie 2001 was actually part of the damn space effort. It was. They were using that movie as as basically kind of like an advertisement <clears throat> for all yeah. their companies and what it is that they could do and the products that they wanted to sell. Even those nuclear powered spacecrafts like the Discovery, it was all based on the what was it, the Orion spaceship, yeah. which is a nuclear powered spaceship. It would throw out three atomic bombs out the back of it, three per second. They were about the size of a Coke can. A big and a big black blast plate on the back, and you could launch it from from Earth, and it was heavy. It was like the size of a small building, and weighed about what a nuclear submarine would weigh. Big heavy spaceship. The heavier, the better, and it would just put put itself up on a damn wave of burning uh, burning nuclear plasma. Try to get it up into space, and when it was up there, that sucker could take off, man. You could, <laughs> you could get to Mars in a few months with that with that that rocket. And they were going to make it, but Kennedy canceled it because he saw that shit. The Air Force wanted some with nuclear guns on them. And he saw that and he realized that the Russians would shit. And that they would that, that they would build the same thing. Basically, building a Death Star. Yeah. You put it in orbit and you can drop it. He's like, yeah, let's not do that. build a Death Star. <laughs> let's not know? encourage that kind of behavior. So, <laughs> no one wants a Death Star. It's a different star. time back then. You know? <laughs> I think they should do it today, though. They did the calculations. Yeah, it's going to put some radiation in the, in the atmosphere, but back in those days, they did that regularly with all the nuclear testing. And really, it only left as much radiation behind as a couple of nuclear tests. And damn, you got North Korea doing that now. It'd be worth it to get a good spaceship up in the damn orbit. Yeah, it's me. Get that good spaceship. Make me the captain. I'll drive it. <laughs> Right, Tom's volunteering right yeah, here on this, yeah. right on this very show. You were they were going to do it back then. The, the, the engine is basically a Coca Cola bottling machine. <laughs> really, it's like a Coca Cola bottling machine, and it just throws those damn at bombs out the bottom. Little little bombs about the size of a Coke can. Throws them out the back. <laughs> no technology at all. No computers. They were going to go. They were going to use that thing without computers, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Point it that way. They're doing math. Well, in a way, like, yeah. that, and seeing the Apollo 11 thing just kind of, like, brought it home to me. Like, obviously, yeah. I intellectually knew this beforehand, but it's like, they didn't really have computers as no. such in 1969, but it's like, it was just all these people, and they had these big, huge books full of calculations, yeah. and they're just, like, sitting there, like, writing all this shit down yeah. and everything like that. I'm like, Dude, that man. is amazing. It's yeah. amazing. Mission Control was back there going, we think if you give it a little bit of thrust or something on its side... And then pour just it on see, a little see bit. See what happens. Just right. run it up the flagpole. Yeah, and they're up there. They're, <laughs> they're in the space capsule looking at Earth, and they just take a grease pencil and make an X. Yeah. Of where Earth is. And then they start going, it was, okay, we'll move it over that way. <laughs> it was so lo-fi. <laughs> but it worked. They did it. They did do it. that shit. That was, man, that was manly shit. Well, it's like... That was I, manly space I loved, I loved, like, all the <laughs> shots of, like, mission control. It's like every single, like, little... Yeah little uh station had like a big fucking drink and a big fucking yeah, drink, ashtray all smoking. with all the smoke and everything all these white dudes with flat tops those horn rim glasses <laughs> yeah. and shit looking at each other and they was worrying. like we got to the moon i just yeah <laughs> but yeah so you know so it's, i like that but yeah um what i was saying before about stanley kubrick it's like i now correct me if i'm wrong but i think the only reason that poor stanley kubrick got roped into this whole i faked the moon landing situation was one because of how realistic 2001 looked, which obviously, like I said, yeah. is because he recruited actual like astrophysicists and stuff to help, help him. The shining yeah, but help. then The Shining came out, and just because Danny had the sweater with the Apollo 11 thing on it, yeah. that was the only reason, right? Yeah, I, I think so. that was the only reason that. Well, because... Kubrick was also like one of the best directors. You know, he was unbeatable during that time. You know yeah. What I mean? So. If you were going to fake the moon landing, that's who you would hire. Do you know that someone made a video with a Stanley Kubrick lookalike and claimed that he had interviewed Stanley Kubrick and that Stanley Kubrick on his deathbed 
admitted that he had fake helped fake the moon landing Bullshit. but it's like if you watch the video well one the guy put the video out and said oh i interviewed him on x date or whatever and stanley kubrick was already dead by then so obviously unless he propped him up yeah. and like zombified him or something and obviously the person in the video looks a little bit like stanley kubrick but not much how do they explain all those command modules <clears throat> sitting up there on the surface of the moon see i don't really think they give it that much thought i i think that that's the problem <laughs> Well, like I said, there's a lot of problems. But the problem yeah. with this, just like the problem with a lot of conspiracy theories, is that they came to the conclusion first. They think the Apollo moon landing was faked for whatever reason they want to think that. Because, so they're gonna oh, it, I don't what? trust the government. I don't do this and that right. the other. So any evidence that you show them to the contrary, they're going to explain it away. Yeah. So people with that kind of mindset, I don't know how productive it is to argue with them. Yeah. Because anything you show, like they'll ask you, it's like, oh, show me proof, show me yeah. proof. But you do. And then they're like, oh, that photo was faked. Yeah. Or what that gonna, was what? not, that they killed that person. Or they're yeah. lying or whatever. So what? it's like, what? What would convince them? What they're going to say is, yeah, those command modules are all sitting there on the surface of the moon, but they were placed there in the 90s by the space shuttle. That's what they're going to say. Yeah, they snuck up so there. They and snuck like, up there, and it, to, they put the space shuttle put them there to cover their tracks to convince people. Well, the did. thing about it, though, is that even in their own like delusional minds, because a lot of conspiracies, too, it's like, one... And particularly when I talk about the flat earth thing, it's like, I don't understand, even if that was a conspiracy, yeah, the earth is really flat and not globe. What would be the point of everyone thinking that? There's no point to it. Um, so even though I can see that, you know, the Apollo moon landing, yeah, maybe the U.S. was like, okay, well, we want to look like we got to the moon before the Russians. Okay, fair enough. That's not a great, you know, fucking motive, but it's a motive at least. Um, but even if that were the case... If we didn't actually go to the moon, the Russians would have called us out on that shit. Because when we were, like, broadcasting from the moon, everyone on Earth could pick those transmissions up, yeah. including them in Russia. Yeah. Now, if the people in Russia picked up the transmissions that said they were coming from the moon and thus said they were coming from, like, Utah or some right, shit like that, know. they would splash that all over yeah. the world. It's like, look at these motherfuckers. They're, like, yeah. trying to fake it. The world, to make us, they would have told everybody. Yeah, the world agreed that those guys were on the moon. <clears throat> Yeah, everybody Basically, picked that. Like yeah. I said, ev anybody could have picked that transmission yeah. up, including the Russians. And I'm sure the Russians were using, you know, high altitude radar to track to track that capsule on its yeah. way on its way out to the moon too. Because you know how curious they were. Yeah, that's like, what I mean. See if that thing's on course. If we had faked yeah. that shit, they would have known they would have, immediately, known. immediately, yeah. and they would have told everyone. Yeah, they'd be they'd be like, if you point your radar your radar, you know, uh, trans transmitters. To this location where it's supposed to be up in space, they're not there. That's what that's what they would say. Yeah. What the Russians would have done. So another one, another um, kind of argument, and I I use that term very loosely, but another argument that they use is like, oh well, how come in all these photos that they took of the moon, you can't see any stars? I mean, you should be able to see stars in these photos and stuff like that. You can though. Well, uh, here's because, the thing. It's because things happen, I think, with the way film processes. Well, what shutter. they had, well, what they had to do was because they were taking a picture of the astronaut who had like a bright white suit on and, and the, put a lens on. Well, he had to have. Yeah. You have to have like a really short exposure time. Yeah. Because otherwise, it'll wash the photo out. Right. So when you have a really short exposure time, I mean, the stars are kind of faint. Yeah. You can see the same thing happens on Earth. Like, if you go outside at night and you take a picture of somebody wearing, like, a, a white person wearing, like, a white dress or something like that, like, in the foreground, and you take a picture of them and it's, like, a short aperture, you're, like, a small aperture, like, a short exposure time, then you won't see any stars on, on Earth either, even it, if you can see them with your eyes, well, just because it won't pick it up. It's the same thing in the desert. If you're out in a desert at night with a bunch of cars, you turn your headlights on, then you go out there and stand in those headlights and look back at those cars and look all around, you won't be able to see any stars. Yeah. yeah. It's the same thing. I mean, They'll it, just look black with the headlights shining Yeah, on. which is exactly what it looks like on the moon because yeah. they had to use the short... Like I said, if, if you... And um, I've seen like examples of this done. They said, because you can even take some of the pictures that they took on the moon and you can take them in Photoshop or your other like you know photo manipulation software... And you can brighten them up to the point where you can see the stars. You can yeah. see them. Right. But when you brighten the photo to the point where you can see the stars, then everything in the front just blows out. Yeah. It's like just a huge white blob of nothing. So that's why they didn't take pictures like that. And like I said, it happens on Earth too. So I guess they don't know how photography works either. Now, another argument that a lot of these people make is that, is that when the lander came down... 
Um, how come there was no blast crater? Now, this is stupid for a couple of reasons. And I like that Phil Plate on his Bad Astronomy blog said something like, okay, well, every time you drive your car and you pull into a parking space, do you pull in it at 100 miles an hour? No, you do not. The lander had a throttle on it. They throttled down. They slowed down. And you would see that if you watch the Apollo 11 documentary. They were, like, slowing down. And, in fact, they were afraid that they weren't going to go quite slow enough, like, to land on the... But eventually they just, like, got it in, like, right under the wire. The the lander wasn't really heavy either. No. The the module on the top of it was really just basically a a glorified pup tent, really. Yeah. It's real thin material. It didn't weigh a whole lot. Well, yeah, they made it, it, like, for a reason. Yeah, it only had a couple guys in it. And then it was in Moon's gravity, which made it even lighter. So it didn't require a whole lot of power to, 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 you know, slow it down. Yeah. You know, you can see stuff, you know, dust and sand being blown away. A little bit. But, you know, just, you're not talking about a whole lot of power. You're not landing. It was only 1.5 pounds per square inch. Yeah, you're not. When they brought it down. So no crater. It's a lot easier. It's not like they crashed into the surface. Well, it's not like they were landing on Earth. That too. You know what I mean? Earth's gravity is a lot more, you know, and. Just, yeah, and also in zero gravity, um, the pressure like is dissipated. Well, they like, weren't a lot in zero quicker. gravity. They did have gravity. Well, you know, but in, I think they were like I think it's one third Earth's gravity. I thought it was a sixth. But, Maybe it's one sixth. Could yeah, be, I think could it's be. one sixth. But yeah, it spreads out much quicker than it yeah. would on Earth. But like I said, even if it didn't, they throttled down so much that it wouldn't have left a crater anyway. Right. Now, we talked a little bit about the dust, about how on Earth it kind of poofs out like in clouds and stuff because of air, um, but it doesn't do that on the moon, and you can clearly see that like when, either when they were like, you know, especially later when you see like the little lunar rovers like going around, and the dust like goes up under their wheels, and it goes like in a little arc, it just goes up and comes back down. Like yeah. it doesn't go poof like that, but that's why, because it's a vacuum. So... Another one that kind of gets shown a lot, and I think I have a picture of this that I took from some crazy whack job site, where they're like, okay, well, the the very famous picture of one of the astronauts that has the reflection of the other astronaut, like, taking his picture, they're like, well, why isn't, you know, yeah, he's taking his picture, but why isn't his hands up here, like, where it would be if it was a camera? I'm like, this is another thing that you could have learned by Googling. The cameras were attached to the front of their spacesuits, about right mm-hmm. here. And yeah. that's where the dude's hands were in the picture. Yeah. The thing is, when you're wearing a big fucking spacesuit and a big fucking space helmet, they're like, obviously, you couldn't just have, like, a little fucking camera like that that you could just bring yeah. up and, like, take a picture like yeah. you were in front of the Eiffel Tower or something like that. They said they had to attach it to the front of the spacesuit to make it, like, easier to use. And, obviously, they practiced using it because they knew that these were going to be very important photos and they couldn't fuck them up. So they had to, like, practice. You know what I mean? They had to practice on Earth with the camera where it was so they would get it right. And even then, they didn't get it right every time. I don't know if a lot of people know this because, like, a lot of conspiracy theory websites kind of say this. is like, oh, all the pictures look perfect and stuff like that. I'm like, that's because they took over 5,000 pictures on the moon and NASA only shows... The best ones, like the ones where that are all fucked up or they messed it up because they weren't paying attention or whatever. They just either scrapped those or they don't really like publicize them because they didn't look that good. It's just like any photographer worth their salt. It's like when you're taking pictures of a model, they take like thousands of pictures and then they just pick a handful of the best ones and like work with those. There's a lot of stuff from that mission that you don't see. Um, Yeah. That that documentary that we saw, that that movie that we saw that we recommend. Is actually imagine you took all the archival film footage, stills, and all the audio recordings, and you edit that together into an action movie about going to the moon. Yeah. With with a with a in it, like an industrial soundtrack. It, it, that's what you'd get. It's a badass movie. That's yeah, badass I really movie. liked it, and I, I felt like I went to the moon. Yeah, it I was, was like, exactly Damn, I went like to the that. Damn moon. It was so much better than First Man, I thought. Well, and it's funny because I was just like, I was looking at another, um, I, w- I don't even remember what, what site it was, but it was like a movie reviewing site and they were like picking their uh, top movies so far this year and Apollo 11 was one of them. Yeah, and they said, and they talked about how, the, the same thing you said, it's like when you see this in the theater, it's yeah. like you were there. It's like you're going, oh, Pookie's messing with Man, it. Man, 
She's attacking the camera. She just Come here. she just can't. Come here. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Come here. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. You were just getting in all kind of trouble, little baby. Stop it. She's getting all She needs attention. Yeah, she does. She's okay. like, okay, well she's like Go baby. get. Get. Go play. <laughs> she's like, I am playing. <laughs> Yeah, there and there was another similar one too, like another similar argument what, about where, um, you know, oh, when the lander takes off from the moon to, you know, the two astronauts that were there and they had to go back up and get into orbit, and they said, oh, well, when that, you know, took off, there was no flame coming out, so that again kind of proved it was fake somehow. But they're like, well, there's no oxygen. No, it's not because no, it's not because of that. It's because the fuel that they used in that particular it it had a flame, but it was transparent. Right. That's it's a transparent flame. It was like a uh, hydrazine, hydrogen, hydrazine rather, and uh, di di what a di nitrogen tetroxide. Yeah. Okay. Those were the two chemicals. Doesn't make that a were, yellow flame. It doesn't make a yellow flame. The flame is transparent. Okay. So that's why that is also not evidence of fakery. So. Again, there's just this whole fucking shit about, and again, once the, one one thing that I saw, and I just was reading this earlier, like before we started recording the show, is that they got like people to be quiet about it. I think even, I maybe, I don't know if it was this, if this particular documentary did this or if it was some other site that did this, but one of them actually accused NASA of killing a dude who was going to come out and say that the moon landing was faked. Yeah. Even yeah, though he'd like died of an accident or a heart reasonable. attack or something like that. Yeah. And it's like, again, this no. kind of, it just kills me. It's 400,000 people, y'all, 400,000 people at least worked on the Apollo project. Did all of those people lie? Were all of those people paid off? Nobody once just said, came forward and said, oh, I was there and they faked it or blah, blah, blah. It's like, why? Why would anyone do that? And it's like now that, like I said, the Soviets would have would have told everybody at the time. They've, they'd have ratted it out. They yeah. had motive to do that had yeah. we faked it. It's like, and even then, like even afterward when nobody had anything to gain, why would... And the, the, the first guys that went to the moon, that was the second crew. The first crew got killed. Yeah. They burned up in a fire in a damn capsule. Okay. They've kind of gotten roped into the whole conspiracy, so, too. Yeah, yeah. So, so they're going to kill three guys to, to get this conspiracy going? Just not. Nah. It just, to me, it seems much easier. Just easier to go. To just yeah. go. <laughs> they were building those rockets. They built all that stuff. They had it. You know what I mean? So why wouldn't you just go? Because that's the, and yeah. like I said, the, again, this is the thing that bothers me about conspiracy theories. Once they get to a certain uh you know level it's just easier to just do whatever it is you said you were going to do yeah. because when you lie about something you have to keep adding on to the you have to keep like remembering like what person did i tell this to and it's like you have to keep like embellishing and adding details on like as people discover the lie or discover like aspects of it so it's like in the end <coughs> It just seems like it would be easier just to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So I just feel like once it gets to a certain level, it's just easier to just do the thing instead of like lying about doing the thing. You know what I mean? It's almost kind of like if you guys ever saw the movie um, Catch Me If You Can, which is about that guy, Frank Ar Arbogast or whatever his name is. It's a true story about a guy who was like a, a con artist and he would go around. He said he was a doctor. He said he was an airplane pilot. He said he was all this other kind of stuff. And at a certain point, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, wouldn't it be easier to just, like, actually become one of those things instead of having to, like, keep having to prop up these elaborate fictions and worry that you're going to get caught? It's just, to me, it seems like too much trouble. Yeah. Like, if you're going to go to the moon, just go to the moon. It's like, don't. It's like, oh, we're going to pretend we went to the moon. We're going to, like, say we're going to have this big studio and Stanley Kubrick is going to be involved and we're going to have to, like, kill 400,000 people to, like, yeah. know about that we faked it and shit like that. It's just crazy. It's craziness. <clears throat> and then there was a the whole thing, too, and I was going to, and I forgot to mention this, too, but something else that a lot of the conspiracy theorists bring up is that, oh, well, the whole Van Allen belt thing where it's like, oh, well, people can't even go through that because, like, the radiation, it'll kill you and all this other kind of crap, which... It will if you hung out in it, but the astronauts don't hang out in it. They just, like, went through it. It only took, like, an hour, two hours, something like that. It's like, 
It was a negligible. It's like you probably get worse having a fucking x-ray at the hospital. They knew what their radiation dose was going to be. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. The and they trip. compensated. And like uh, the metal of the spacecraft did actually shield some shield them from some of the radiation also. Yeah. So now, you- they were worried about it before they went because they weren't entirely sure. Like the Russians were worried about it before they went. But once they had kind of established like how much of it was up there and stuff, they weren't really worried about it. Like yeah. I said, it, it would only hurt you if you hung out in it like for hours and days and stuff. Then, well, they said that when you were in space too, you you t- you you'd, you'd see momentary flashes every now and then in yeah. your eye, and that's subatomic particles penetrating you in the craft and going through your eyeball and bing, and you see bing. a little flash of light in your eye. Yeah, but it's you know <clears throat> not enough to affect your lifespan. Yeah, exactly. Basically. Like I said, it was just like you probably get more getting a fucking X-ray, and people do that without even thinking about it. Yeah. But um, yeah. It was, oh, actually, so it was when I when I was scrolling down my notes, I did notice it was this particular documentary that said the Apollo One fire that the three astronauts got killed in. It was mm-hmm. Roger Chaffee, Ed White, and Gus Grissom got killed in the fire. Um, they kind of implied on this documentary that NASA did that on purpose, like because. They were going to talk to the press about how they were going to fake the... <laughs> that's not, no. Which, what the fuck? Come on. Come on now. That's ri- that's ridiculous. Yeah. Like I said, I can see how... I feel like a lot of this stuff, this kind of stuff, like the Apollo moon landing hoax, like the JFK conspiracy, all that kind of stuff, it kind of happened after, you know, like after the 60s and the 70s, where, and after it happened after Watergate, really, because there's like, look, you can't trust the government, look, look what the president was doing. So it's like, I, I get that. Like, I can see how we thought we could trust the government. We thought we could trust authority figures. You can't trust them. But that doesn't mean that everything they say is a lie. I mean, you have to have other evidence, you know, supporting your argument. You can't just pull it out of your butt. Oh, well, the government said it, so it's a lie. That's not necessarily the case. Those dudes were hell-bent on going <clears throat> to the moon. They gave them the money. They told them to do it. They all wanted to go. That's they what were, I mean. It's like they these were all like hard. scientists and yeah. rocketists. Like they wanted to get, they were they like excited about it. They weren't. They they weren't the kind of. This wasn't the kind of situation where they. Well, you know, let's fake going to the moon. No, those dudes wanted to go to the moon. Yeah. And there was a long history of this shit going all the way back with the X planes, and all kinds of weird stuff. You know. So yeah, no, no. Yeah. That and, whole scene was all about you know breaking records. Uh, yeah. Airspeed records, uh, they're trying to go, you know, transonic, and then they wanted to go to outer space and go to the moon. I mean, you know, this had been going along for this had been going on for a long, long time with these test pilots. And this is just the an outgrowth of that, really. Yeah. It's an outgrowth of kinda like what was going on at the fucking skunk works and stuff. So no, these dudes were all about it. Yeah, and that's the they thing. They were all it's about like... it. And getting killed in an effort to break the sound barrier or fly Mach three or to go to the moon? No, those dudes were ready for that. They were like honored to die. Well, yeah. Well, this. it was seen like a big. It was a yeah. big deal. It was like a big human endeavor. It was something that had never been done before, yeah. and so you can see why they wanted to be a part of this monumental thing. And I feel like, you know, given that most of them had that type of mindset, they called even it back if they, in the day the right stuff. And these yeah. dudes all had the right stuff, no matter what their job was. Even if they wanted to beat the Russians, yeah. would there be any satisfaction in it if they knew that they had just faked the whole thing? Yeah. It's like, it just seems like a ludicrous, ludicrous proposition yeah. that, like I said, it, ju- it was just like, confounded like the most... This cat's driving me crazy. Paper hey, thin of it? motives, no. you know? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, she's Yeah, like, it was a different generation. <clears throat> I think uh, a lot of young people today don't really understand. They don't, I don't think they're the kind of people that would really be willing to risk their life and possibly die doing something like this. Oh, I'm going to do that. You know, shit. Man, well, I don't, like I said, I don't think you can, like, it was, these dudes shit were, on an entire generation. Because well, I mean, lot, you know, there's lots of people There's probably that are some like guys that. that are like that. These of are course. Thrills, these are thrill-seeking guys. <clears throat> there's always people like that in every generation. Most of these guys came from, you know, World War II fighter pilots and then test pilots. These guys were, you know... And and if they weren't that, they came from that scene. Their friends were like that. Yeah. This is the whole scene. And that's what they did. Yeah. And I feel like, like I said, this... I don't think the moon landing hoax stuff... I mean, a lot of, like, stupid shit that people believe, um, particularly creationism, which is my big... That's, like, a big thing that pisses me off. But all this kind of stuff that people believe, most of the time I'm just like, whatever, crazy person. Like, it doesn't bother me. This one didn't really bother me because I just thought it was a bunch of idiots. But then 
I think the more I read about it, and I think particularly seeing like Apollo 11 and seeing like a lot of that footage, which I had never seen before and stuff like that. And then when I started reading about it for this show, then I started to get mad. I don't think it like made me mad before, but now it kind of does. Because I'm like, you are impugning the memories of all these fine individuals that worked on this shit and like worked so hard and got it to work. And they were so happy that it worked and you know the dudes walked on the moon and everything and well, everybody some, was all like yeah that was get, awesome i don't get i don't get mad at it because i've known guys that actually believe this and they're the same kind of guys that just love denying shit so you, contrarians yeah they know that that happened they just don't want to accept it they know that it happened yeah they just want to say that it did <clears throat> What is with what like what is with that what is the psychological I'm not a psychologist so if anybody is what is the psychological breakdown of an individual like that because I've they don't known, have any accomplishments. I've known denialists I've known contrarians does it make them feel smarter No they have like shit for accomplishments when yeah. somebody else accomplishes something So they get mad they got to go that so didn't they happen. have to sh- they that have didn't to crap happen on it. that didn't happen right to, to make their insignificant or accomplishments or their lack of accomplishments seem less punitive against them. You know what I'm talking about? Right. Because they're like, yeah. well, I well, live in my mom's basement yeah, right, yeah. and eat burritos from right. 7-Eleven. And I'm telling you, they but didn't go to the moon. nobody else has done anything yeah. worth the shit either. Yeah, so. they're lying. <laughs> so I look yeah. like a little bit better by comparison. Yeah. Well, that goes back... That goes back <laughs> It's play a hate. There were a lot of people. <laughs> there were a lot of people in the very, in, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, <coughs> that when they saw Greek and Roman statues of gladiators and gods, they would say that those were idealized statues. <coughs> that nobody really. Looked that like nobody that really looked like that. But no, there were bodybuilders that came in the 18 late 1800s. You know, like Eugene Sandow and some of the other ones that looked at those proportions and went, "I could do that," and they worked out and. Got those proportions. Yeah. And then people were like, were amazed. Then they, you know, they had to go on tour and people, oh my God, that you can, you know. Oh my God. The perfect body. Yeah. And thus, gay porn was born. <laughs> They've had gay porn for thousands of years. Yeah. But yeah, that, well, I was reading something about it um, today. I, I kind of went off, like, while I was researching the show, I kind of went off down this big, like, rabbit hole of, like, um, you know, like a lot of like critical thinking literature and stuff like that, which I'm actually really into. I have like a ton of books about it on my bookshelf. But one thing that always struck me about people that believe in particularly these big, like wide ranging conspiracy theories, I don't necessarily think they're stupid. Sometimes they're, sometimes they're ignorant of basic scientific facts or things like that. Because I mean, obviously the whole thing about, oh, why don't the stars show up in the photographs? If you knew anything about photography, you would know why or if you know anything about optics so that's like scientific ignorance but i feel like they're not necessarily stupid i think a lot of them are like of average or even above average intelligence but the problem is that they're so insecure about the level of their intelligence that they want to appear more intelligent by feeling like they know some kind of secret knowledge or they've seen through the lie they took the red pill. Yeah. You know what I mean? They've seen the matrix. They know everything isn't the way people told you. Like, So they want to feel like they're part of this special elite that's like not fooled by this. You know what I mean? I feel like there's a little bit of that going on. Like they want to feel special or like smarter than everybody else. I think there's an aspect of that too. Maybe. But I, I do definitely feel like, so I, so I would not necessarily call a lot of these people stupid. Maybe some of them have some mental illnesses. Well, Maybe some, some of them are scientifically ignorant of some types I, of things. But. I think the guys that were writing books about this <clears throat> just thought that it would be a, a book that would sell. Well, that that's too. They, that's they're really, sure like there's a whole thing where people are just like uh, alternate, espousing a certain view just because. Yeah, it's an alternate take that might be that maybe might sell on the market. It might be sensational. Yeah, but they don't even necessarily believe yeah, it themselves, they're gonna, but right. they're just going to write stuff about that. Right, which that happens a lot like in law and in politics. They do the same thing. Well, you know what? If I can get voters, if I take it at this angle, you know, let's go. Well, yeah. So in that yeah. case, you're just being a provocateur. Right, I'm, right, ta- right. I'm talking about people that actually believe, like people that actually believe that people. Did I not told land you on what my actual experience was, in knowing guys <coughs> that didn't believe in the moon landing. They didn't believe in the moon landing because they didn't want to believe in the moon landing. Well, I feel like because that's true that of a lot of this mean, kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, because that would mean 
that someone else had greater accomplishments than theirs. That's really what's yeah. what it's about. And it's because and for whatever reason they they come to the conclusion that well, I don't believe the moon landing happened. So then they just go and look for evidence that supports that hypothesis. Right. The opposite to how science right. is supposed to work. It's like I'm just gonna look for. I'm gonna go look for some crazy person on YouTube right. that has like some fucking poorly lit photographs. That's like, oh yeah, I'm sure. But they're not gonna look for anything that's gonna falsify that right. hypothesis or anything like that. So I feel like there's some of that going on too. I feel, I feel like they want to be like a little bit in the special elite, like. So they can like look down on other people like I'm smarter than you. Like I, I didn't fall for the lie that NASA has been telling us that they actually went to the moon for what or why whatever they lied to everybody about it for fifty fucking years. I don't know. But like I don't know. I feel like there's some of that going on too. All right, so we're gonna take a little bit of a break. When we come back we'll talk about some more space conspiracies, flat earth type stuff, black knight satellite, all that kind of stuff. So flat Earth isn't as dumb as you think as it sounds. Yeah, it is. I'm going to get into it. It's I'm dumber it. than it sounds. It. It's dumber than it it's sounds. It's not what it appears to be. Okay. It's not what it appears to be. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> All right, we'll be back in just a minute. Look at Pookie. Whenever laundry comes, she's got to get in. You get in the laundry? What you doing? What you doing, Pookie? Yeah. You okay? What you looking at? <laughs> What's up? What's up? What you doing? Yeah, you wanna come out? You just gonna stay in the laundry? It's warm. Warm laundry. Yeah. Yeah, what's up? What's up, Brandy? What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> it's like, why are you laughing at me? <laughs> why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? She's basking in her laundry happiness. Yeah, is that what you're doing? 